So Martin Gould then finds himself three frames behind and he's <laughs> starting to think he's got to do something now and I've watched Martin play quite a number of times over the last few years and he's uh, done very well to get into the top 16 and one of his, uh, one of his strengths is, is a temperament. I find that he's one of those players that when he gets asked a question he normally comes up with the answers. Playing the slightly more difficult red because that avails better position. Mm, See, so the just having things going his own way at the minute, David. I mean, he absolutely really played a very, very poor safety shot, but he left Martin in a position where he got to play a, a long screw shot. Well, this would be a shot if it worked. He's looking at the, the outside red of the pack and screwing across, kissing into those two reds, but. And any colour or bought colour would be good here. All he needs to do is get onto a colour. The reds are perfect. Doesn't want to risk really playing for the black. He's having another look if he plays the cannon. He's having another look at this cannon, isn't he? The red two down is thinking about playing that, but if there's any chance of playing around the back of the black for blue or bought colour, I would just certainly suggest that's the better choice. Very well played. Very well played. Okay, I'm not too sure he played the kiss on the black first. But whatever happened, once he played the shot like that, he perhaps deserved to be on it. Eight. Well, after the safety shot he played earlier on in this first, this, uh, this frame, the first shot he played really, it was such a bad safety shot. Nine. Martin Gould had a chance of a medium distance red and at this stage you've got to make those. Martin is one of the best players on the circuit over mid and long distance. Could he get a bit tougher when you're behind in matches? Sixteen. So after that uh, good positional shot, this Seven. is another good chance for uh, Dave Gilbert. He's already made, already made six breaks over 50 in this match. It's pretty good stuff. 24. Of course you get a spring in your step when you're in front and when you're behind, especially at the crucible, I mean it's it's a very tough place to be. You can't have it both ways, I'm afraid. If you do well here, you're, you know, it's a, it's a fabulous feeling and so you've got to take the other side of it as well. Because somehow if you look at the likes of John Higgins who's done so well here for the last few years that, uh, that he tends to hang on there and find something when he needs it. And that's what you've got to do in the long sessions. You're not going to play well all the time. 32. 33. Take that well. So you can see the uh, chance here is a clear cut one. They've just got to carry on now with his thoughts as they've been throughout the match and not think of he could be 6 2 or 7 2 oh. in front, which is easily done out there.
last you want. Well, he'd like that one back again. Not a difficult cannon, that one. He'd be disappointed. Maybe forced into taking a colour on because of the red down into the bark area. Looks like he's going for the blue. Oh. How good was that? In the circumstances, one of the best shots we've seen so far in the match. Committed himself fully. Knew he'd be leaving the red on if he missed it. Could win in the frame, or at least give him a chance to win it. A very good chance. Carlos positional shots in the last couple of shots, hasn't he? Played to go on the black, kiss the red. Played to come through the bork, colours there, kiss the brown. OK, yellow and green are both on. But they're a little bit thin. And they don't really want to be playing these at this stage. But if he goes in and gets on a red, he should win the frame. It has gone in, and he's nicely on a red. Should win the frame again now. 50. <coughs> Got to make sure he's higher on the blue. 51. It's pretty good. He, he hit that with a lot of backspin, but delivered the cue very slowly to hold the cue ball. 56. Nice shot there, nice touch. 57. 64. 65. Well, he played a great, uh, great position of shot early on in this break to bring the brack into play. And then, of course, lost position at a pot of tremendous blue down into the, uh, into the left uh, ball pocket. Keep the break going. A little awkward here. Just the black then. If he misses the red now, he's going to be 6 2 in front. Dave Gilbert, 72. Amazing. He's bought all those good shots and missed the red like that when he was safe. So once again, it's given Martin Gould a, cl a glimmer of hope, which he had in the last frame when it looked as if Dave Gilbert was going to win it. But it's funny how you get patterns in matches, and we've seen a number of times in this match so far that. When the player's got to the uh, winning position, he's missed a ball, and now he's played a poor, poor safety shot and left Martin a very good chance to get on the black, and he only needs uh, two four-point snookers at the moment. Let me see him get a uh, few reds and few blacks here. So ideally, he'd like to pop all the reds apart from the one behind the pink.
Eight. Nine. Touch a side that, take the cue ball past that red. 60. No, if he's uh, trying to get a snooker off the uh, red behind the pink, he's going to have to give himself a good angle here on the black, and he's done that. He's got for the red between the uh, blue and the ball cushion there. Oh, well, well, well. That was an unexpected miss. Man, full pocket then, more to play into. Be very disappointed. He'll concede now and 